God bless, God bless, and welcome back to another video here, another podcast video. Um, and we just hope that this is a blessing for you, uh, uh, for edification. And most of all, we give all the glory, all the honor to our Lord and Savior. And, you know, got my brother, got another brother here with us. Praise God. Representing the street representing fishing. Street fishing, <laughs> you know, God is good. Yeah, man. So we hope that you enjoy this video um, and just stay tuned. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so, my brother, I guess we can start it off. Just go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, my name is Luis uh, Gutierrez. I've been serving the Lord. I give honor and glory to God, first and foremost, before we start this video. Because it might be my story, our story, but it's His glory. So my name is Luis Gutierrez, just to start it off. And I hope this testimony touches many people or people that are going through struggles and trials and tribulations. That the Holy Spirit may touch somebody out there on social media or wherever you are listening to this podcast. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now that's an introduction. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. So going straight into it. Um um, you know, kind of where are you from? Like, where were you born? I'm originally from Orange County, Orange County, Santana, mm -hmm. which is, you know, Southern California. And childhood, well, it was pretty tough because my father, you know, he was a uh, smoking rock. And I was about five years old. He used to beat on my mom. He used to get violent. And... Unfortunately, we had to leave to Mexico when I was five. My mom got tired of it. And uh, I ended up being raised in Mexico from five to 10. And that's all where it all began. I never had a childhood. It was pretty tough. Mama had to go to work two jobs a day mm -hmm. just to feed three of us. And, you know, at age of seven, I got introduced to marijuana, smoking a little J drinking i was getting messed up mm. so basically i never had a childhood yeah okay man rough childhood um yeah you know relate there um myself started smoking drinking um you know not a, not extensively but like you know introduced mm -hmm. around that same time about eight between eight to ten uh -huh. um part of my testimony i always share like you know most kids they cut they go play outside come home you know and that's it but for me it's like one of the first things my mom did when i came home is to smell my breath to see if i smoked that yeah just to make sure yeah <laughs> and i'm like elementary school so it's like man you know man. It, and it's definitely um you know it's rough because yeah like you say there is no childhood nope you get you get you get introduced to things so young that it just pretty much takes away it, it strips you from your innocence. It does. It does. And you no longer pretty much even though you're still a young age, but you no longer live Think as like a, a child kid. or yeah. Kid. yeah. 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 So that's man, it's rough. It's rough having um you know, to have to grow up like that because then either there's a change and then things get better and you kinda get right on track or it's just downhill from there. And so your childhood, um, were you, what? so up until when did you come back to the States? I came back when I was 10 years old. Okay. Um, actually, my dad was, you know, calling my mom and, and telling her that she missed us, that, that he changed. <laughs> and, you know, he probably changed for maybe the benefit of him. He was still using yeah, yeah. But mom said, all right, since I was born here, he said, I'll pay for the ticket. And I, you know, flew over here when I was 10. But it didn't take much for me to, you know, get caught up in gangs, get caught up on trying to find that, the, the homie love or that, the father figure. Because yeah. regardless, my dad was there, you know, it was, he was there physically, but not mentally or, yeah, or spiritually. Yeah. Cause he was still smoking rock, yeah. You know, yeah. and and I started getting in trouble at sixth grade. Over there, we uh, we call it junior high. 
So it goes by semesters. I only made it the first three semesters, and then I got expelled from the whole district of Orange County. So around, you know, 11, 12 years old, I was already going continuation after continuation, yeah. smoking pot in class, getting into fights, getting the cops called on me, you know, and, and at 14, I ended up going to juvenile hall, wow. you know, because then, then I got introduced to the homies. Mm -hmm. And since my father was, you know, an OG, you could say that. And as a little kid, I, I seen those things. So I wanted to be like my dad. Mm -hmm. Say, so when I grow up, I want to be a gangster like my pops. You know what I mean? So that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I guess going a little bit uh, backwards, um, touching a little bit back. Yes, sir. So when when did you exactly get introduced, um, or I guess an estimate, when did you get introduced to, like, the gangs? At 14. At 14. So that's junior high. Yeah, junior high. So within your junior high, there was already, um, I mean, well, I guess you could say, like, in some junior highs, I mean, there are some people that already get jumped in. I'll, I'll definitely say that. Yes, sir. Um, but most of the time, it's the little brothers of like the older people of that older are people you know involved on it. In yeah, yeah. So definitely, but there's still that almost like that environment that is created. It is. And yeah, you it get is. introduced and you become aware of the sides. Yeah, you know? most definitely. So, yeah, man, so junior high, fourteen years old. Fourteen years old. Um, and did you just like? Did you jump straight into it and like just start moving? Yeah, active? started started getting jumped in. I was I kicked it with them for about first three months, mm -hmm. and they just came. Hey, homie, are you ready? So there was a gang of us, you know, about twenty of us. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest. There were the oldest was about nineteen. Uh -huh. So there was twenty of us that were hanging around, you know, going on missions, beating up people shooting people you know the yeah, things that yeah, yeah, yeah. people had to do to to prove yourself <laughs> that you're gonna be down for the gang down for the barrio yeah and i guess i threw it too hard because i ended up getting caught up mm. for murder at 14 and some change maybe 14 and a half oh wow so it was just just, just straight in you drove it straight in <laughs> I was trying to jump in the deep end, man. So that's it was crazy. pretty tough, my brother. But you know, hey, you ran. You uh, what's the word? Uh, you ran wild with it. Went wild with it, man. And, that's and, that's intense, bro. Because I know most of the time is you know people kind of ease into it, or like you know it's usually the other home. Come on, come um, on. But man, it sounded like you just it just went straight. You just took off, just, you know. <laughs> but you think you think. Um, do uh, you think maybe that was part of because of something you was looking for, um, you know, like to belong, to be recognized, or something maybe you didn't get from your pops? You could say that, too. And at the same time, as a little kid, I was, I could say, now I could say, as I grew spiritually and, and, and you know, give honor to God, to God for giving, you know, having grace on me. Uh, it was more of having a lot of anger in my in my heart, having confusion. Yeah. Because at the same time, by seeing him being the, the dad he was, using drugs and being a gang member, I wanted to be like him. But at the same time, I had everything that he used to do to my mom when he used to be aggressive with her yeah, yeah. inside my heart. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's what it was more. So that's why I think I used to try to take that anger as a little kid, confused, and you know, went too hard on the paint. Yeah, with the gang and all that stuff. Yeah, I think sometimes um, you know I, I I can speak on that too because that was my fuel, the rage. Yeah, just the anger and and the hurt. Um, I know, like like with me, it wasn't even like um, like if you were to take out the gang part of my testimony, mm -hmm. there would still be anger and rage. Like, because that was my main thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even really like, um, you know, going around, you know, homies and stuff like that. It was just something that kind of, I fell into it. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like, 
I searched it or it just kind of, it just became extra. But my main thing was just hurting hurt. people. Okay. And like, yeah, because of the hurt that I had and the anger that I had mm -hmm. inside, I just wanted like just to let loose. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think I think when, when we're fueled by things like that or even sometimes like bitterness or when, when those things get rooted inside us, especially as a young age, I think it's very, um, it's dangerous. It is. Because then... I mean, like how you said, like, you know, like what I said, it's you just let loose and just run wild run and wild. just chaotic mm -hmm. and just, man, yeah. it's just kind of flashback. No, it's, man, it's, <laughs> but it's, man, it's tough, especially, you know, you know, like I said before, especially as a kid. As a kid. As a kid, man, it's, it's, it's a trip. And I think even more so, it's like where I, I feel like, and I thank God. Definitely even more so um, because the way, like how you're saying, the way you started, it definitely like, it's like how the saying goes, you either go, uh, I, might, I might butcher it, <laughs> where it goes, um, you either end up two places or three places. Either dead, in prison, or in the hospital. Yeah, something like something that. Like yeah, that. Like, something like that. I couldn't remember exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'm about to butcher it. <laughs> something like that. But yeah, either you go six feet under, life in prison, or you know, you know, you paralyze or something. Yeah, and most of them do. Like yeah. you know, people end up wheelchairs. Yeah, and can't I can't move. I have a uh, one of the homeboys from Antioch. You know, his brother died. He's paralyzed from head to toe, and then. You know, and that could be tough. You just never know in that in that gang life. Yeah. And 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 that mentality that I grew up with was either it's gonna be you or it's gonna be me. Yeah. And that's why I chose to go. You know what I mean? Like, <coughs> and because I was the youngest. Yeah. I was just a little kid, you know, a little pelon. And know. probably as the youngest, you probably has to prove the most. And I had to, you know, I feel yeah. like I had to be more aggressive than others because. Of the f of the fact that I was younger than everybody, yeah, you know what I mean, and but praise God, man, He has a lot of mercy. Oh yeah, <laughs> a lot definitely, of mercy. man, definitely. Um, moving on. So, with that being said, I mean, with the things that you shared already, um, what was the? Did you have any type of church background? Like, how was it faith wise within your household? Well, the usual and the typical, you know. Like Brother Alonso was saying, the typical Mexican or Latino Catholic. culture, <laughs> you know, traditional, the Cat traditional, Ca Catholic, traditional yeah. Catholic, because, you know, they used to say that, you know, they're Catholic, but they don't even go to church yeah. or they wait, you know, the once a year thing and the the holiday, the holiday <laughs> and then that's it. They'll forget about it the whole year, you know? Oh, man. Yeah. They go, what is that? Easter, yeah, Easter, Easter and all that, Christmas. you know, all that, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Just another Time excuse. To go to church. Yeah. Another excuse to, you know what I mean? Eat, nah, yeah. and get messed up, and and you know all that wild stuff, man. Nah, you know ungodly things. No, nah. that was just an excuse, really, for it. Yeah, you know? no, man, it's sad too because man, that's that's literally like almost your typical, yeah, the typical, your Hispanic, typical Hispanic, Hispanic uh, when it comes to faith. Yeah, it's typical and it's traditional. It is traditional. Um, Catholicism. It is. It's not even like it's not. you know, like uh, as far as like following a religion. Yeah, exactly. It's more just hey, this is what we've been. This is what your grandparents. That's what the grandparents taught this us, and that's what yeah, you know, yeah, they introduced that to us. And know? it's sad too because man, I I've, I had a lot of friends, especially when I got saved. Um, and of course, you know, when you get saved, you want to tell everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. So most of my friends are Catholic. And even though I was showing them scripture and showing them truth, they were still they're like, no, but I'm Catholic. <laughs> They'll like, still argue, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. bro, like, look, like you're reading it. In Spanish, we call them, uh, son católicos de hueso colorado. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Even though you show them scripture by scripture and scripture. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I learned one thing in the Bible when I was in prison. After studying it. I counted 339 times through the whole Bible. It says, do not commit adultery. Do not idolize. <laughs> do not worship an idol. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, this is not a religion. This is a relationship with God. Amen. And, you know, it says in the Bible, do not make 
or create any image of any kind and 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 pretend it's me and worship you know he wants the true worshipers and just you know the relationship with him one on one no amen amen and i think that's definitely um i think the moment people start to realize exactly like what it says in here and not what you've been told or what's been exactly. passed down that's when you start to really discover who God is. Exactly. And it's kind of like what Brother Lonzo said. It wasn't until he was in jail and he started going, um, you know, to church in there. And he started really listening to the preachings Amen. and what was being taught. Amen. That's when he was like, oh, wait. Now, wait a minute. This is this is something different yes. than what I've been yes, passed sir. down, you know? This is a real guy. But it's, it's yeah, it's, it's true. Amen. And like how the word says that the truth shall make you free. Amen. So I think the moment people really, and, I, and I'll say this. It is very important to read your word. Amen. So read your word. Read your word. <laughs> Always. Because the truth is in here. It is. And it don't matter what people have taught you, what, what, what's been passed down in your family through maybe tradition or um, or even like with me, in my case, I'm a PK. I'm a pastor's kid. Amen. So a lot of times, especially when I, when I first got saved um, or after I got saved and I started learning things. They'll be like the the famous famous phrase I used to hear all the time. Oh, you believe that because that's what your parents believed. Oh, okay. You know, oh, that's what your parents. You know, that's what your dad that's taught. That's what your dad taught you. I'm like, nope. no, I study that. this right here. And God showed me through the scripture. You know, <laughs> and I think the moment I, that's like I say again, very important to read Amen. the word Amen. because this is the truth. The Thank moment you. you discover truth, the more you're you know you get set free. Amen. And so you know, definitely. Um, you know, where's your word? <laughs> Read your word. That's solid food right here. For real. This is the spiritual food we have to eat. Open up your Bible. Yeah, amen. Amen. So traditional Catholic family. Um, so let's say uh, we kind of already went through when did you start going wrong? I forgot to close the window. So if you guys heard the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. My bad. <laughs> We're good in here. <laughs> like they're coming. No, no more like doors. No more like doors. We set free in the name of Jesus. We haven't even got to the bad parts. <laughs> they listen to me. But yeah, so uh, I think you kind of already mentioned um, when was the first time you got arrested and how was that like? It was a nasty feeling because even though I already. I'd done so many things, you know, as a little kid, I already had loosened that fear of hurting somebody because, you know, I went down for murder. I was hey, fighting life. Here? I was 14. 14. I was fighting life. I was tried as an adult. Dang, at 14. So I was already fighting life. So being the kid, the little kid trying to be that lion, even though I was a little mouse, when I heard that, because I was there first for a stolen car yeah. and possession of cocaine. And after some detectives came around 3 o'clock, wanted to talk to me, talking about, tell us what happened. I said, I already told you what happened. I stole the car, and and that's what happened. What else do you want to know? No, tell us about the shooting. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I'm not here for no shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We already know you did it. Blah, blah, blah. They try to spit that game, try to trick, you know, trick you up. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. I got the right to remain silent and I'm here for a stolen car. That's it. <laughs> I want to go back to, you know, I want to go back to sleep. It's three o'clock in the morning. I want to get a bed and get my cell and get this over with. Yeah. But now nah, they kept me there. I was fighting it for almost four years. I didn't get out till I was almost 18. I had to go to Penn State Hospital. Mm -hmm. Because they diagnosed me with, uh, I don't know if it was uh, delusional. They sent some psych doctors to evaluate oh, okay, me yeah. because they thought something was wrong with my head. And maybe it was. I was a little kid messed up. Yeah. used to use meth. You know. Jays, well, yeah. I was already at yeah, 13, 14. I was already using meth. Yeah. You smoking my dad's clavo. You know, I used to go in his closet and used to find the stash. And I used to smoke his crack. Man. You know what I mean? So it was, even though I went through all those type of, you know, 
trying to do bad things. When they told me I was there for murder and I was fighting life, my heart dropped. Yeah. So that's when the first time I could say that I remember about God. I said, I know there was a God. Because when I was a little kid, there was this alabanza in Spanish that used to, um, I, I, when I got there, it came to my mind. And it used to be, a, a, the name of the song was, Yo Tengo Un Amigo Que Me Ama. Yeah. So I started singing and singing. And for some reason, I asked for a Bible. And I said, God, if you're real, get me out of this. I got on my knees to start praying. Because I was in my cell by myself. <laughs> I couldn't be with other groups because of the set I was from, the water I was from, had too many enemies. Oh, yeah. So they had to, by law, I had to put me separately and I couldn't come out with other, everybody else because every other group had enemies. Yeah. So I had time in my cell. So I used to cry out to the, I said, please God, if you real, show me, get me out of this mess. And I didn't know how to read the Bible. And going a little bit back, I was expelled from from the district. So I really didn't know how to read. Yeah. Coming back from Mexico at 10, so I didn't really know how to speak English. So I was learning as I was going by. And God revealed to me, it's like the, the, the once I opened up the Bible, the words used to come out, like 3D. It was just so amazing. Yeah. Even though I didn't know how to read that much, he revealed to me what he was trying to tell me. And that's when I used to cry and just say, God, I know you're real. You're talking to me through your word. And that's when I started studying and studying and studying. And I pray for a miracle. So that life without parole, it ended up dropping it to manslaughter. They gave me a strike. And then I pleaded NGI, not guilty by reason of insanity, mm -hmm. because I went to the mental yeah, hospital. Yeah, yeah. So they did say there was something, you know, Psychologically. psychologically. Yeah. So that helped. So I knew that was God. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I knew that was God. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was joyed. I was, man. It was it was amazing. It was an amazing sign and a proof that he showed me that he was real. Yeah. And I think I think definitely what made it count was that you searched for him. Mm -hmm. that you really like you said you cried out I cried out like it was it was it was just something like definitely from a thing of soul and I think I think that's the difference between um, having remorse and being at a repentance state I repent is truthfully because when it's when it's remorse it's kind of just superficial it's like on the surface level mm -hmm. and then after that feeling is over it's like boom like, you forget you back about to it, it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but when when you actually repented of something and you're in that state of repentance it's deeper it's it's in the heart it's in the soul Amen. and and like how you said man the, i think you said the perfect words you cried out i cried out amen and that's definitely what the bible says it takes me to jeremiah 33 3 you know it says you know uh, to cry out to cry out unto him and mm -hmm. then he'll show you he things, show you things. And even things that you don't even know amen so it, it's definitely man I think I think that definitely played a, a big part um, that it was it was a genuine cry out. Amen. And I think God, you know, kind of honored that, and He saw your heart. Amen. And so He kind of, you know, like He showed you that He was there for he you. Was there, he was there, especially like how you say you come come from a traditional, um, you background. know, Catholic background, mm -hmm. where I mean. God is there, and you kind of know of God, of but you God. don't really yet know exactly. God. Exactly. And I think that moment, you know, you could kind of speak on that too. I think that moment is when you really knew, knew God. I was getting to know Him. Yeah. Amen. And that's that's beautiful, bro. That's that's absolutely beautiful. Um. So to to you know moving on, um. For uh, so how long were you in, um? Up until you got out, four years. So from so fourteen to 18. to eighteen. Okay, and at the end of it, so you did. Uh, once again, you you did. It went from uh, from murder from murder to uh, voluntary manslaughter. Okay, that's man. 
That's big. That was that was so I knew that was big in America. And what was the like the uh, the time that you would have done if you would have got murdered? Probably life. I was I was facing life, sixty to life. Oh shoot! First they try to uh, you know allegate that I was underage and that even though I was trying to do it, they try to uh, give me the minimum was juvenile life. Yeah. So juvenile life meaning that I would go to YA till I was twenty five, and I was fourteen at the time, so it was still gonna be a long stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, God had mercy on me and heard my cry out, even though that I did really didn't know him. But like you said, you know, he seen the heart and he didn't give me no juvenile life. He got me out after four years. Ah, oh, man. That's amazing, bro. Because even like, you know, speaking to Brother Alonzo, um, the charges he faced and then just doing the, the little time that he did. I mean, I mean not little time, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eight years, eight years is but long compared time. to what he could have got, Amen. definitely, um, you know, God came through. Amen. Um, and the same, you know, could be said in your situation Amen. where what you should have done is not what you did. Amen. And I think that's that's to to really speak out on that. That's exactly what the whole thing where Jesus sacrificed, you know, being on the cross. Amen. Exactly because he did for us something where we should have gone through and should have suffered but because of god loving us so much amen that he sent his son to die on a cross so that we wouldn't we don't have, have to. to go through that exactly amen and that's definitely like bro that's 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 the gospel kind of like um in live action in your life amen because what we should have got Amen. It's not what god has given us amen. and he showed us mercy and he showed us grace always and just the love that he has for that us, love and that you know, uh, definitely shows in the life, uh, in our lives, and and just the stuff that he's 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 done for us. Amen. So I mean, like I said, man, that's Praise that's God. a beautiful thing. Praise God. Um, you know, it's man, I you can't really say nothing else than that. You know, it's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful what he did, what he does for us. Exactly. So, Amen. man. So after you get out. For doing those four years, um, was there a change, or did it just continue? It was there was change in my heart, in my mind, because the things that I went through in there, and what God has shown me. But again, as a young eighteen-year-old coming out of juvenile hall, coming out of you know <laughs> gang banging. You know, like many people, they get out of jail and attempt to forget. Yeah. So I was young and dumb. I was on parole. I, my aunt brought me in the train over here with my mom because my mom was living in Enya. My dad was deported, so he was kind of hiding over there. So he came back and he was hiding, you know, in, between the mist and Orange County. So I got released to my tia. Then my tia told my mom that she was gonna bring me over here in the train. So then I had to do transfer paperwork for my parole to come to the closest one and it was here in Concord. That was the closest office. So they're like, yeah. okay, you could go, you could transfer. Because due to the fact that, you know, my auntie Said, hey, well, I could help you for a month or two, but I got, you know, four grown kids that I got to take care of. Yeah. So, you know, I had to, you know, come over here and that's when I moved. So that was the change. I said, thank God, you know, thank you. Maybe so this change is good. I'm I'm going to a whole nother city, a whole nother, you know, town. Maybe that will help me to change and, 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 and show you the God that I really want to change. Since you show me a miracle, you know, I, I would be willing to to change, mm -hmm. but it only took about thirteen months. I started meeting people. Start uh, one one time. One I had a little party in India. People's coming in, and I come to find out I had a a couple of cousins that from over here from the Bay Area, and you know. They were cholos too, <laughs> so anyway, you know, and I got introduced to them. I didn't know they were my cousins; they were my primos. So I started hanging out with them every weekend. Yeah, Dale, every Friday, hanging out, 
getting drunk, going buy some beer, smoking weed, doing coke, doing meth, whatever it was that we had, you know, the life of an 18 year old, you know, again. So from gang banging coming to a change, the same cycle yeah. kept repeating itself, you know. And that's when I got cut up again, a year later. Yeah, so now you're about 19, I'm 20. about eight. I was 18 and, again, like 18 and three months, 18 and a half. Okay. And I was you on, get caught up this time? I got caught up in Antioch. Okay. And that's when we're going to, you know, relate and cross path with the brother testimony. You know, I caught up that crime of stabbing. Mm-hmm. And in Antioch on Eagle Rage. You know, and we were out there drinking, hanging out with some girls, and we seen some guys by the by the uh, stop sign. I mean, by the the bus stop. The bus stop. And we drinking, we just going around, and we saw somebody from the other side start throwing <laughs> gangsters at them. You know, <laughs> and we busted a U, busted a Chicano U turn. I got off. They took off running. I, you know, I was drunk. It's kind of buzzing, but I don't know. I, somehow I caught up to this guy. I pull up my switchblade and start stabbing him. You know, and and after the stabbing happened, my boy is over here trying to rob a white boy. And I'm looking, and a lot is going on, and I'm like, what are you doing? Let's go. Yeah. He was like, nah, nah. I'm going to rob this dude. He don't want to give me his backpack. I said, come on, bro. Are you asking? Are you robbing him? Are you asking him or are you demanding his stuff? So I look, all this and that, and I'm like, my, a thousand things are going to my mind. I'm like, man, I just did this thing. This boy over here making it. Let's go. So I said, man, this is how you do it, bro. And I would walk up to this dude and I socked him. He dropped. Took the backpack, took his shoes, and yeah, I gotta bounce. We supposed to get a ride. They dropped us off about a yard, probably like a block away from from the crime scene yeah. at the park. Oh, man, I was tripping. No, no, they're going to come get us. Oh, man, it was bad. <laughs> this dude walks up and says, you guys are okay because somebody said they were going to call the cops. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we good. You know, they were all drunk, the girls and all this other stuff. As soon as he said that, the cops showed up. <laughs> And, you know, they put the handcuffs on. They're like, you're not. You're not arrested. You're detained. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they put the handcuffs, they hit the radio. We got the, the you know, 10-4. We got the description of the suspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here we go. Here we go again. I'm in the back yeah, yeah. cop car. Please, God, please, God, don't let these guys take me. But you see how we tempt to forget. But then when we're in trouble, here we go again begging. Yeah. Lord, Lord, forgive us. Lord, Lord, forgive us. But he got me back in jail. But it was for a reason. I got my back. Let me let me rephrase that. I got I got myself back in jail. He <laughs> yeah. allowed it to get my attention again. Yeah. And you know, here I am in jail again. I got a strike. So I got strike priors. I'm in there for assault with deadly weapon. Conspiracy to commit a crime, street terrorism, gang enhancement, uh, and you know, assault with deadly weapon, GBI. So that was I was fighting 34 years Man. with all these charges at 18 years old. And I'm sure I already had a, even though it's juvenile. But I was tried as an adult, so it was still strike. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was it was harsh. Oh, dang. So they were looking at me pretty. Yeah, serious. You know. Serious. You ain't learned your lesson. So, man, I was in there for five years in Martinez fighting my case. Bro, even just you being out here, bro, like free, free, it's crazy. It is. And I mean, it just it just goes to show of what God can do and and the plans that God has for you. Because I mean, bro, you've already faced you know facing life Life's- once. Get a strike, come out, then get booked again for now th- facing 34 years. 34 years. years. Man. 
It's just unbelievable. It's, cr it's crazy it's how, crazy. you know, when you're so caught up and so deep in the gang or gang banging, your pride or whatever it is, it just, we tend to forget right. and we can't let go. We're so caught up so deep that uh -huh. we tend to forget what he got us out of. Uh -huh. You see what I mean? And here we go again. Yeah, and I, I think, I think definitely, I mean, it may or maybe you can agree as well. I think we're definitely, um, what, what, I guess what, where it started the wrong direction would be you probably hanging out with your cousins. Yeah, it was. Um, going back to the same environment, the same, the you know, same rodeo. the same moments, the same motions, the same routine. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, it just basically just getting back, you know, back into the business. Back to the business. And I think, yeah, when the moment you, we, we, we do that, yeah, we forget. We, tend to we forget quick. what God's done for us. We forget the things we kind of, um, well, you know. Well, we just asked before <laughs> that, you know, well, we just yeah. asked, you know. Yeah, man. And I, and I think like, you know, if I could share, um. The thing that I and, I, and see the thing, I think, and I thank God, I thank God for allowing me to have realized that, um, to have that in my mentality. So the thing that I, that I, um, around 18, um, the thing that I came to realize that if I did it, that if I went back into the same circles, because, so when I was getting in trouble, I was in Sacramento. Okay. Then we came out here to live in Oakley. Okay. Um, and I was going to high school. But, and, I, and like I said, I thank God for giving me that that realization that to recognize that. That if I continue you know on the same. the same circles. And and mind you, I don't know if, well, I don't think you knew, but I had a hit on me at 15. Oh. And then I had another one wow. at 18. Wow. And so I realized at that point, you know, because you were like, the yeah, same yeah. situation, bro. Like, oh no, not like, this. Here we go again. again. Yeah. And even telling my mom because when I when I was fifteen, I had to move to my grandma's, mm -hmm. and I, I tell my mom like, hey, um, so I got people looking for me again. <laughs> I think we need to move. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that said, it wasn't until that happened. Like, oh God. Um, yeah, so yeah, you know, I need help. I need help. <laughs> I, need help I need help. And so, but you know, I thank God that He gave me that realization where I recognized that if I went back or continued into the same circles, the same environment, that the path that I was heading was that was going to be prison dead. life, okay. death, yeah, most likely, death. most likely. Um, and I mean, that's part of my testimony too. Cause Amen. I had I had a, the spirit of death really. On you, just look, yeah, and, and so not can relate, yeah, man. And so, um, yeah, it's 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 something that I thank God that He realized it. And what I did, um, what I did because or what I felt I needed to do was just completely cut off everything. And Amen. basically, what I did, I disappeared, just I, I stopped going to the high school that I went to because at the time I was going to Freedom. Okay. I stopped going to Freedom and started going to, uh, what was it called? Independence. Okay. In Brentwood, Independence, good, yeah. Um, across from Liberty. Mm -hmm. So I went there, but I completely, like, just, I didn't tell nobody. You were just fresh, I just, new. Oh, like, just disappeared. Like, I just stopped going to Freedom out of nowhere. Just, that's it. And, and well, I changed my phone number. Everything. Got off social media. Just literally disappeared and that's something we have but, to do that yeah but i realized that was something i needed to do because i knew if i still started hanging out with people going out to people like it was going to end up in the same yeah. circle the same especially because even around that time bro, like just or before that time i remember part of that whole hit thing um i went to school because i was you know, still in high school Went to school and one one of my friends was like, "Hey, good thing you didn't go to that party, cause oh, dude, that said he was gonna do something was there and Ooh, he was telling everybody." See, God was. So then I was like, "Alright, you know, <laughs> you see the, the outcome of it, like so, okay, you know, that's kind of that also helped, man. Like if I continue on and start, you know, still going to the kickbacks, start going to the you parties, was get cut up in the yeah, eventually sooner or later, 
that was definitely was, I realized prison was definitely not somewhere I was gonna go. It was definitely that was definitely six definitely feet under, death. Death. yeah, six feet under. Um, especially because like what I shared with Alonzo, you know, teachers was telling me that you're not wow. gonna make it past eighteen. Wow, you're not gonna like. So it was you know, literally it was to me, it was basically they were manifesting it on yeah. you because you know words, and I that, received it, and you was exactly. So you know, even the teachers were telling you this. So it was manifest. It was it was about to manifest yeah. because the word says in the Bible that what we speak is so powerful. Yeah. You know, if we speak to us in, in insistence, like an example, prophesy over our kids that they're gonna, when they grow up, they're gonna serve the Lord like us, and and they're gonna, you know, be an evangelist, whatever position that He puts them. That we declare that they're gonna serve. You know, when it comes to 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 come real because we we believe that in our hearts but we're not just believing it but we're speaking it and you yeah. know and once you speak something into an into it's like the thought when you think about uh doing something bad or good either bad or good and you always think about it first yeah. and then you put it into action so and I, it it was crazy bro easy. you know and 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 even so, because like, so when we came from Sacramento, you know, my, my pops was sick. Um, you know, he, he he eventually passed away from cancer. Um, wow. But we were living with a tia at the time in Oakley. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy, bro, because her pastor came one day um, to visit and we lived there. And I think if I remember correctly, it was like a little bit after he walks into the house. Wow. And he tells my tia, like, there's a spirit of death in here. Wow. And I'll tell you, bro, it, and it was something eventually I got delivered from. Wow, praise and God. Because praise it God. was just on me, bro. And, you know, really trying to. Wow. And I've, I've, I've almost, and this is like part of like what I tell people, man, like when when you've almost died as much as I've had, <laughs> like, bro, I'm almost, I've, I'm almost drowned at four years old, wow. almost drowned at eight years old. Wow. I've been in, I can't even tell you how many car accidents I've been in, wow. including the one two years ago. Um, man, just, you know, and the hits, I've, I've had two hits on me by the wow. time I was 18 or before I was 18. Wow. Um, and so just, man, the death was on me and it was, I think part of it was, well, not even part of it, it most, all of it, <laughs> I, I was going to say most, but not even most, all of it. Everything. So I don't know, uh, I don't think I've shared with you, but I used to be, uh, into the cult. Oh, was you? Oh, I didn't know. Um, so I was like into rituals and oh, okay. blood packs. Blood packs and all that. And so, wow. bro. So you was getting, yeah. Death yeah. was definitely. Most definitely, you open a, a, a oh, spiritual yeah. door. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's, uh, man, that's I, critical. I've been through deliverance several times just because of everything I welcomed in. Yeah. And, and yeah, man, it was, it was, it was a crazy time. And wow. that's part of, yeah, definitely. I thank God wow. for, for allowing me to recognize that if I didn't make those changes that were the, that cut off of just everybody. Everything. Um, because at that point in time, um, um, I knew that I, I, I needed to change. I needed Amen. to change. Yeah, that was a must. Otherwise I'm going to die. Amen. You know, like I said, I received it. I believed it, and I lived like it. Like it. So that's why. And I so, but I knew it like at the time I had just been saved, bro. I got saved 2008, uh, March wow. March 16, 2008. Wow. Uh, my pops passes Where's away that? August 2008. Ooh, so it was. So that, bro, it was the biggest hit yes. that I could even ever face. And it definitely, I started to question because it's like, come on, oh, God. Come on, God. That's when it Like, I finally give you a chance and then, and then you do you, this. And then you do this. And like, me as a son, bro, I never got to redeem myself as a son uh -huh. because, you know, I wasn't the best son. And I mean, he, my pops got to see me get saved, Amen. get baptized. Amen. That was the good thing. Um, but I didn't get a chance to like do better. Or for him to really see it. See that, that you were on um, the right path. Yeah. yeah. And so I knew that I needed to change, that I wanted change. And I knew this was something that I needed to do. Amen. And so, man, I thank God for that. And, you know, so, hey, uh, man. That's, <laughs> where, kinda, that's, that's where it all started. Track, yeah. yeah. That's kind of where it started for me. Amen. Um, so I guess 
to to touch in to to touch in on that. Amen. Where would you say there was that encounter where God encountered you again and you're like, I need to fully commit? It was most definitely, like I said, where we left at. I was back again in my prison cell. I mean, in the in the county jail, in the cell. And even though I was, you know, active, I was with the homies, you know, doing all kinds of things, you know, getting involved on chequeadas, when somebody messes up, riots, yeah. you give them a 13-second regulation, you put them in the cell, you beat them up because he messed up. I was involved, you know, active, like I said, and but deep in my heart because... I wanted to know him and I wanted to really, really know who this Jesus was, yeah. you know? And I didn't want to, like you said, I didn't want to believe what they had taught me, my mom, my grandpa, or, or whoever that used to tell me about Jesus. I wanted to learn more about him because I knew the basics, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he, he was born of a Virgin Mary. But other than that, I really didn't know much. Yeah. So I got to, you know, study the word more and more because we only used to come out for one hour a day. So I thank God for, you know, because he does everything on his timing. His times are perfect. Amen. And he does things for a reason. And as a father to a son, who well, I could say that on my behalf, I got kids. My kid is 15. My oldest one is 19. The youngest one is nine. So as a father, when they misbehave, we give them time out. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we discipline our kids because we love them. Mm -hmm. So I truly believe that he was disciplining. And, and I accepted that, that I needed that because I deserved it. Because I had prayed for him to show me that he was real. He took me out of the life sentence. <laughs> But here I come again, you know, like uh, uh, a bad kid that don't listen to parents, to pops. Yeah. I was disobeying what I had said when I was in juvenile hall crying like a little baby. So I accepted that. And I, I said, Lord, every time I used to read my Bible, nobody taught me how to read it. I didn't really know, like I said, but he did. Because I, all I knew that I had to pray. Because we used to go to Bible study once in a while when they used to let them in. Yeah. Like once a month. And I remember the lady, she was from Panama. She said, oh, every time you read your word, just open it up. But before you open it up, pray and, and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to, to give you understanding of what the word means or what he's trying to tell you in the word. And that always helped. God, please, Lord, I don't know much about the Bible, but talk to me. Speak to me. Show me the way. Show me what you're trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. Guide me. Give me wisdom and understanding of the, uh, of the Bible. And, and little by little, you know, five years passed by. So I was eating food. I was, you know, studying the Bible. Yeah. And and that's where I could say that my prayers were at nighttime. Please, God, just give me another chance. Please. It won't be like this, the first time. Now I'm getting older. I'm fighting another strike. I want a family. I want kids. I want a wife. Those are desires of my heart, Lord. So maybe that could help me change. If you give me that, you know, I'll, I'll show you, Lord. And five years later and all that good stuff, I took a deal. Uh, five years time served. I took another strike. And I got, was released from county. And a month later, here we go. I met my wife. On my birthday, I got out January 18, 2013. My birthday was February 16. So literally it was like a month apart. Okay. And I'm like, God, I mean, <laughs> really? I said, thank you, Lord, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, but you listen to my prayers. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I got introduced to her. So then, not even a month out, you know, uh, I get to know her and, you know, we're going out. And I find out that she's pregnant. I oh. said, oh, my God. I said, I know I asked for this, Lord. <laughs> but but not right now. 
You know, I didn't have a job. I'm on parole. I'm registered <laughs> as a gang member. You know, I got two strikes. I'm like, really, God? Really? Why right now? Even though that I asked for this thing, we still question God. You know, why? Why? But, you know, later on in our faith today that we know that t God's timings are perfect. Exactly. So here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm having a kid. I'm 22 years old. Fresh out of doing five years. So remember that I've been in jail or juvenile hall in jail most of my Basically life. Fourteen, yeah. So I never had a, I never was a kid. I never had a youth. So now I'm a grown man, you could say. But deep inside, I was just a little Still boy. A kid, yeah. You know, I was twenty two years old. And now you know, I find out that she's pregnant and I'm having a baby. So I'm like, God, please just help me. I mean, help me through this. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but just help me. Yeah. Now that you provided what I asked, I said, but thank you. I'm happy. So little by little, you know, the, the nine months of pregnancy. Every time, you know, we used to get a little tipsy with my wife and, you know, smoke a little J, start smoking cigarettes and hang out with my brother-in-laws on the weekends. Uh, we used to say, babe, you know what? We can't be doing all, all everything that we do. We can't do it all of our lives. I said we have to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. And that was two thousand. I was talking about two thousand thirteen. So she used to call me crazy. She laughed at me and like you're crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> I said something big is coming, babe. Yeah. I said God is coming back. We live in the end times, and that was two thousand thirteen. So I start, you know, maybe a little tipsy or, you know, the weed was hitting me or something. But that's all I knew. All I knew was jail and Bible. Yeah. So even though I was probably, you know, on drugs or intoxicated, I used to, for some reason, I used to always talk to her about, you know, the Bible, that there is a God. She used to be like, you're crazy. Who baptized you? <laughs> Who baptized you? I said, I don't know. No, then you're Catholic. You're Catholic. So why are you saying that? That you believe in the Bible and that and that this is that that you're Christian? I said, No, no, no. Listen to me. Listen. That's the thing. When we're little kids, they sprinkle some water, holy water, whatever they do, and, and, and the kid, what happens? The kid starts crying. Because, you know, he don't even know what he's, you know? Yeah, yeah. He don't even know how to say papa or mama. So how can you really say that I was baptized when I don't even remember it? You know, and baptized meaning you are, you are acknowledged and knowing what you're accepting. Meaning not just the baptism on water, but accepting the Lord as your your, your God and your yeah. Savior. Amen. You know, so it was back and forth. The baby was born. Um, still kind of. Even though I knew the scripture in my heart, I was still, you know, in between smoking meth, gang banging. I was still on parole, uh, getting caught up in things. So still getting in trouble. So I guess fast forward, um, when would you say um, you started, you know, going to church? You know, kind of really taking your faith serious, like going to church, you know. Um. See, I, after that, that stabbing and nothing happened, we moved to Anya to, on Delta Fair, continued to do the same things, drugs. But out of nowhere, this old man comes. His name is Jorge. So this old man, Salvadorian guy, he passed away, unfortunately already. One Saturday morning, we're going to uh to the buffet in Conquer, here in Conquer, to the hometown or the golden, the new one. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget the name. Uh, so I'm, I turn on the car, you know, I'm putting the seat, the, the the baby seat in order, and it's Saturday morning, and I see this old man going like this, like he's looking for somebody now. And I'm behind him, and I'm like, well, who's he looking for? I don't see nobody. 
He turns around and he's like, oh, I was looking for you. Te estaba buscando a ti. Yo? So I really thought he was kind of, you know, cuckoo in the head. I said, nah, está loco, you know? He's like, ah, si pote, eres de la mara salvatrucha. I said, no, yo no de la mara, no. Ah, entonces tiene muchos tatuajes. So, you know, he was a good charisma. He was talking to me. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You know, knew how to talk to me. And he was funny. So I'm like, no, no, no. So then he comes out and over from left, left field. Do you know about, about the Lord Jesus Christ? I said, amen, my brother, amen, I do. Yeah, yeah. So it got interesting. It broke, it broke the ice. He was yeah. like, okay, tell me, tell me something about, about the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, I know the, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, rose on the third day for your sins and my sins. So meaning that if we believe in our heart that he is the Messiah, that he is Jesus Christ and that he died for our sins and we accept him in our heart as the Lord and Savior yeah. that, and come to repentance, that he will forgive us for all our sins, all the bad deeds that we have done and that we should never perish and that we, we should have everlasting life. So he was like... <laughs> Gave him the he, whole he, gospel, he, he said, you know, he, he was like, oh, my God. He said, entonces no eres tú de la mara, tú no eres cholo. Le digo, no, pues no, pues no soy. I'm not. I am not. I'm telling you. And I, you know, I told him, I said, you know, some people always quick to judge the book by its cover. Yeah. But without knowing that person, you know. But that's how I know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So he started praying for me. At the time, I was still struggling. Because I was on parole still. It was the second number I had. And uh, I didn't have no job at the time. So, you know, I said, I need prayer. All right. Do you believe the prayer is going to come true? I said, amen. He said, lift up your hands. He touched both of my hands. He started praying. God, please, God, hear his prayers. The desires of his heart, his needs. He needs a job. He believes in his heart that he will get this job. And that you continue to manifest and show him. That you are the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he prayed. I said, amen. <laughs> a week later, I got a job in McDonald's. Oh, you know, okay. so I said, praise yeah, God. Yeah. I told my wife, hey, this old man, remember he came? Yeah, I said, he prayed for me. He said, if I have faith, you know, getting a job, that I was going to get it. He was like, that's weird. <laughs> she, you know, she didn't, you know. And I said, well, praise God, he did that. Yeah. And then... You know, I was working in Mickey D's. I was in McDonald's. God was good. And, you know, still half-stepping it. He disappeared for about three months. And I don't know where. In the midst of this, I'm still using meth, even though I was still working. My brother must live there. So it was hard to break that circle yeah. because they were users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to this day, they're still using, you know. And I pray for them that the Lord Jesus Christ, through this testimony, may help them and reach them when they see it, if they see it. Amen. You know, that they, it touched their hearts that, they, you know, there is hope. And as long as we are alive, that there is hope. Amen. And if I could do it, they could do it. Anybody could do it. If the Lord Jesus Christ could restore me, Brother Ezekiel, from these evil deeds, from this evil, you know, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Amen. but we don't fear because the Lord is there. He already Amen. died for us. He already took the keys from death. So, yeah, it started all like that. He invited us to church. Yeah. He said, I invite your whole family. Come on Sunday to church. And there was a Spanish ministry here in uh, uh, in, in Enya uh, called Arboles de Justicia. It's by sunset. On sunset, uh, by the freeway. And we, we went there, all broken. And, you know, at the time, the, the f I think the first time, I was just a day off of meth. So I was really kicking. <laughs> I went in there, you know, with all my family, my wife, my kids, my mother-in-law, my three brother-in-laws. And, you know, we just walked in there. The past, the people that were like, <laughs> oh, hermano Jorjito came out of nowhere. He said, I told you, when you see them, don't, just don't throw bleach at them. <laughs> you know, saying in a yeah, joke yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the, all the tattoos that yeah, we had. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, you know, my face tattoos, my brother-in-law had, you know, tattoos on the eyebrow, on the side. He put some horns on them. You know, and, and and so that's what he said. Welcome them in. Just don't put bleach on them. You know, and they walked them in, you know, hug. I felt the holy presence. I felt his 
presence because I started tearing up. Yeah. I wasn't even into my chair, just the love that they shared, yeah, yeah, the yeah. atmosphere that was there. I was like, oh my God, I started just tearing, 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 and just crying like a baby. And God was good. You know, we got baptized there. We went to a retreat, a youth retreat up there by Yosemite that the pastor has. And, you know, there was a river out there in the mountains, and that's where I got baptized. Wow. And that was about in 2015. And it was amazing because I felt his presence over there, you know, and they anointed me there. It was an evangelist, a Spanish uh, evangelista. He was preaching and God spoke to him and he called me out. He said, you come here. God has told me, put in my heart to anoint you with oil and anoint you to that you're going to be an evangelist. Yeah. And I believed it and I received it. So fast forward a little bit. With that being said, I was baptized. I was feeling joy. My brother, I guess he's seen it. He said, hey, what, what did you guys get up there? He said, I want some of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, you know, it caught me out of guard. I said, well, I believe it's, you know, once you get baptized, the Holy Spirit, the joy is just, it's up on us. So God is good, bro. You Next time you're going to go. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. I want it. I don't know what it is, but I want it. So, you know, later on, fast forward from that church, went to Rio Vista with the family, the pastor, everybody. And they did baptism. And they got, my, 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 my wife got baptized. My mother-in-law got baptized. The kids got baptized in uh, Rio Vista <laughs> after we got baptized. So God was doing things, moving things around, you know, healing people, healing my wife, healing me, my mother-in-law, and, you know, little by little. And that was the process, but at the time it were beginners, I was still stumbling. No, yeah. And I, you know, I kind of was, you know, and I was, I fell again and went to prison. Oh, I went to prison again for third, fourth time. Third, fourth time. Yeah. So I went to prison and I ended up doing four years and a half on top of whatever. You know, I really don't know how to count, but if you guys do, basically my whole testimony was that I've been more locked, been up, locked up than right. out here. Yeah. So. Man, so you were in what, 2015? 16. 16? After oh, I was so baptized. You got out, what, during I got out COVID 2021. Hit? 2021. Oh, COVID hit. We were on lockdown Man. at COVID. Man, so you basically have only been now, what, three years? This time, yeah, amen. Boy, I'm tired of the whole... Yeah. Man, so I guess to, to touch a little bit back. So 2015, you go to a retreat. You go, you get prayed for, basically anointed. Anointed. Anointed uh, to be an evangelist. Amen. Prophesied to Prophesied. be an evangelist. Amen. And so this is where the... The story gets gets fun. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's fun Amen. because I remember, you know, we kind of spoke about this uh, when we went to eat. Um, that at first it was kind of like almost like it was it was it was kind of like I think your wife mentioned it. Amen. Where she was like him, yeah, like, <laughs> after, like everything, yeah. And he still get locked still, up. Still, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, the evangelist is yeah. locked up. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but that's 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 what makes it fun because Amen. and it's all God because the word was given, you know, that prophetic word was given. Like you said, you received it. I received it. You believed it, and to be anointed that, and like I said, it gets fun because fast forward, let the people know what is it that you're involved in right now. I just want to give honor and glory to God. He has those words, those prophetic words in 2015 just came to fulfillment about a year ago, been solidly serving the Lord, give it all, all my all and faithfully. And within that year, he has put me on the streets. And the word that he gave me back then, it, it's it's happening now. He has put it in action. We go evangelize with the brother. Oh, I haven't got to actually. Let me take the back. 
<laughs> I haven't got a chance to go with my brother Ezekiel to evangelize for the street fishing, you know, but he has made me a leader on Thursdays to go evangelize with the brothers at King's Chapel. Yeah. So give honor and glory to God for allowing me to do that. Because I used to think, nah, not me. Yeah. Nah, why me? A person like me did this, did that. They did all kinds of bad things, hurt people, did drugs. Just, it just gives me joy because if he could do it with me and my brother Ezekiel right here, he could do it with anybody. Amen. His love is limitless. <coughs> so Amen. I just, you know, give honor and, and glory to God because now we... We brothers in Christ, man. Yeah, amen. Praise God. For the streets to back to the streets. Back to the streets. <laughs> so, you know, God has called me for that. And I feel that very strong because I tell people when we go evangelize, he took me out of the streets to go back again. But what the men, the enemy meant for bad, now he turned it into good. Amen. You know what I mean? For his amen. glory now. Amen. Yeah. And just a, just a quick shout out to... So our brothers in Christ, our fellow soldiers in Christ, Amen. You know, Brother Darren with Eagle Altar Ministries and Brother Gay, Pastor Gay, Pastor Darren. Amen. Um, you know, Salvation in the Streets. So Amen. shout out to the brothers, to the pastors, to our fellow soldiers out Everybody there. Everybody in King Chapel, all the brothers yeah. in the ministry, all the brothers, you know, evangelizing. Everybody involved. Shout you know. out, special shout out. <laughs> all love. We love you guys. Amen. And keep doing what you're doing. Praise God for the kingdom of God. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Thank you. Know, I, I, man, that's that's another thing I thank God for, that he's placed me um, in a church, King's Chapel. Amen. That he's placed me in a church surrounded by, by fellow evangelists. Amen. Amen. Like, it's crazy. It's amazing. You know? it's like, amazing. I, I was actually speaking to, uh, to Darren about this, man, like, um, a while back. Like, it's crazy because... so. All my all my years that I've been involved in ministry, I've always been, you know, and most of us, we feel like it where the churches that we've been in, we've been like the leader of evangelism mm -hmm. and then everybody just kind of follows. Yeah, man. But like being at King's Chapel for the first time, I get to feel surrounded by other evangelists that Amen. are doing Amen. the same the thing same that I want to do. Like, it, it's so different. It's so different, but I love it because it's like almost like it takes away like some type like like como carga. Like, like carga, it, yeah. It takes away um, yeah, that weight. Yeah, yeah. A weight some some weight. That off before it. where it's like I'm the only one, so I have to be I, out there. Yes, I, yes. But now it's like it's all of us. Yeah. And it's so many of us. It's so many, amen. That it's just like So it's like, okay, I could breathe now. Like Yeah. Now I don't have to feel the pressure that I gotta do it. I gotta exactly, do everything. Exactly. You know, God has put, you know, amazing. And now man. I can do podcasts. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And yeah. that's another thing that we could touch a little bit before we go. It's amazing how God if you ask from your heart, no matter what, he will always give it to you. Amen. Because when you ask, it says in the Bible, you should receive, not just from inside out, but from the heart. And this, and I'm speaking today as a witness. God is my witness. These were always my desires. Because I knew once we have somebody that has a podcast, could reach many people out there yeah. with our testimony. Amen. And not just give glory and honor to God because it might be our story, but it's his glory. Amen. Amen. And 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 that's all that everything, everything, everything here is not for us. It's not for, for him. It's Amen. it's not self glory, it's for his glory. Because he's the one that deserves the glory and the honor. Because he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one that Amen. died for our sins. Amen. You know? No, definitely, bro. And like what you said, man, that's that's my intention with the podcast. Amen. Praise God. Um, you know, I recognize that God has, has given me a platform. Um, we're almost to eight hundred subscribers on YouTube. Amen. Praise God. Um, I have about just on just under five thousand on TikTok. Praise God. And and the thing is, like with me. Um, and I, I tell this people I tell I tell this to people all the time where my mission is not to grow street fishing. Like I could care less if people even join the team, you know, quote unquote street fishing. 
because my goal is to expand the kingdom. Amen. And that's all and, that matters. Yeah. And if God has given me a platform, then I don't want to use the platform to grow myself or to promote myself. That's why on any of my social media, whether it's TikTok, YouTube, um, Instagram, or Facebook, I'll post other people sharing stuff. Amen. Um, like yeah. I, you know, and I've like, seen that, and, and I've so, seen that because I, I want, I want, because I understand that the words that some other person might share, another brother or sister might share, might not be something I say, but what they say at that time might reach, you know, hundreds, maybe even thousands. Hey, man. Like I have a video on Instagram of a sister where she's she's out there with the street preaching, hey, has twenty thousand views. Wow, that's not me. That's that's the Lord, but it's up there. It's up there. See what because I, mean? I, bro, that's what I want. Because I want souls to be, to be saved. Pleased. Yes, to be saved. And on the back of the shirt, it says souls. My know, only mission, mission is, is soul souls. Fishing. Amen. So that's the thing. It's that's, not that's for street mission. fishing to Amen. grow. It's, just, it's not for me to be recognized to you know get some type of you know famous or whatever. My mission is souls. Amen. So if I can bring people. You know, to share testimonies, Amen. to share a word. Praise God. So someone that is out there listening Amen. can be edified, can be touched to the point where they seek God. That's what I want. Amen. That's my intention. Praise God. So I thank you, bro, for coming on here to to share your, your testimony, to Amen. share what God has done for you. Because, man, he's, he's done a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> and that's more than one chance and how they say out there, more than... A second chance. Yeah. He gave me many chances. Yeah, yeah. And I just, you know, I want to thank you for inviting me to 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 share the testimony. Amen. And like you said, we're in the same purpose. We're in the same spirit and an agreement yeah. that we're not here to make us famous. It's for the kingdom of God. To fish souls. You're taking the job of Peter. He was no longer fishing fish. Yeah. He said, he took him out. He said... I'll make you a disciple, but now I'll make you a, a fisher, fisher of men. Man. So, hey, praise God, man. And the verse is on the shirt. Amen. See, Matthew 4.19. 4, where Jesus tells Peter, Amen. follow me. Follow me. And I'll make you fisher, fisher of men. Man. Amen. And that's what we do. We fisher we're for in the same page. And for we the kingdom of God, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing, my brother. God Amen. is good, man. Appreciate it, man. And so, you know, with that said, um, you know, we finish off. And once again, thank you guys for watching. Um, hope this was edifying and Amen. and anybody watching out there, um, don't ever think you're too far gone, you're too deep in. You know, if God saved me, God saved my brother Amen. and all the other brothers that have been on here and that will be on here. Amen. If he saved us, he can most definitely save you. Amen. You're never too far gone, never. you're never too lost, never too high, never too drunk. Never. If if you really Allow God, open up your heart for, for God to come in, for Jesus to come in, confess that he is Lord, receive him into your heart, then you too can be saved. Amen. Believe it, receive it, declare it. Amen. <laughs> and so we just thank you once again for watching. Um, you know, shout out to, to my fellow soldiers out there Amen. hitting the streets, winning Amen. souls. Amen. And, you know, we just pray that you... Uh, are blessed by this by this episode amen so feel free to comment down below let us know what you think feel free to like the video amen. most importantly share it not for our benefit but for the, but kingdom, of for god. the kingdom of god amen. amen so i hope to see you guys on the next one god bless god bless